Uh, this is our FEMA wall mount commercial espresso machine. Uh, it is classic, mid-century modern, FEMA manufacturer. This is a 110 volt machine, very lucky, so it was produced for the United States market. It uh, has, as you can see, a huge adjustable drip tray, the big uh, Fez, uh, FEMA president style group. This is the original bumpy grip on the lever. Thankfully, FEMA still produces the plastic replacement grips for the portafilters. There's some other classic FEMA touches, like the tamper here with uh, the hook, the short pigtail steam wand. Uh, but it's all in all FEMA, a very unique vintage machine. I'm going to lay it down. And we'll take a little tour to see what various parts like that. Luckily there was the big drip tray that came with it. I was glad about that. On this side, rather plain, on-off switch. Recessed in here is a screw that you turn to adjust the temperature of the group. As you can see, the drip tray is adjustable up and down. Uh, we'll call this the mystery nozzle for right now because it remains a mystery. The machine is meant to be plumbed in permanently with the water supply controlled by this valve, and this valve is very important in controlling the machine. On this side, we'll see, once again, steam one. We'll turn it up this way so you can get a look. I've loosened the screws on the aluminum cover. As you can see, it has two big bearings. Uh, which give you a nice smooth pull. Got some fresh grease in the bearings. This part here, this is the cover for the thermal probe that sits down into the group and monitors the temperature. As we come around, the principle of this machine is very simple that it requires flowing line pressure water to fill this group, what you're looking at, that's the boiler. This part right here, I've got a little thermal cheater strip on here, which really gives me a good idea of what's going on. But here's, this is our boiler. It holds about two cups of water. This nut that you see, this bolt right here, there's a removable standpipe that, that goes up about this high. The standpipe goes through the boiler and the top of this tube uh, feeds the group. There's a small hole in the cylinder. When you pull down on the lever, the uh, cylinder fills, but only from the top of the tube. This means a big problem was solved in that you want hot water into the group. As you pull the lever down, the line refills the group, of course, with cooler water than you want to use. And so the, the source of the water is the very top of the group, and then the group, the, the boiler automatically refills back up to the top. This, of course, <coughs> gives some issues with steaming, because when you go to steam, your first few seconds of, of steam valve usage is straight water. And so that's going to take a little bit of a, a technique to, to really get that figured out. But it, it causes both certain problems, but they, they did solve the, the, the issue of how to protect the element. The element is encased, as you can see, here's the back. Here, these are the electrical controls to the element. It's 1,500 watts. And so it's almost like a flash boiler that this line, as you see, there's a thermal probe that sticks down into the boiler, and it follows down through here, and around here to the, uh, well, this is a, a heat expansion uh, unit. I haven't taken it apart. Obviously, this is uh, vintage machinery, but you can see how simple it is. Well, let's just follow the path of the way the machine works. We have our water valve. The water valve is open. This feeds the group through this large line. Okay, the electrical 
is all controlled by this center unit. This is the brain. Here we have the thermal probe. This comes down to the thermal expansion valve. It pushes out on, as it warms up, it will push out here, goes through these series of armatures up to the mercury switch. We recently found out that these switches are uh, available, thankfully. This one is uh, obviously in good shape and it works fine. The switch is pivoted here in the center. It's adjustable in two places with these two screws. I, I haven't touched it because it's working fine. These are the insulating beads. They're ceramic. When the machine's mounted on the wall, they'll hang down and get a little protection against this hot spot here. Um, our big mystery is the nozzle tube that you, you see on the front and it is fed through this small tube here. Inside of this fitting is a heavy spring with a seal that seals against uh, a seat right in here. With the water on, there's no flow. First we thought it was a faucet. Uh, we thought it operated kind of like a spit sink, that it, it swished water around in this, this big uh, drip bowl to keep it clean. That's not the case. It's been rebuilt. Have a new seal in here and a Teflon washer here. I think that it's likely the overpressure device that when you're steaming, well, as I said, you run the machine, you have the valve open, water is free to go to the group to fill the boiler. When you remove water uh, through, or when you move water while you're pulling a shot, it automatically refills. To steam, you have to close this. That way the, the boiler, as you remove some water, then you're producing steam, and when you close the steam valve, quite possibly the overpressure would feed back through here. We haven't seen it in action. That's only a theory. It's a very simple machine, and with so many of these vintage uh, machines, uh, whether they're espresso machines or anything else, you're always asking, why did they stop making this? It is just so cool, so simple, so well made, and it will be on our wall, and hopefully we'll be able to take a video of this FEMA wall mount machine in action.